Uh, welcome, my dear students. This is Dr. Osama Kashwa, and this is a new um, uh, unit in business management. We will talk about the communication. Communication, C-O-M-M-U-N-I-C-A-T-I-O-N. -I communication, but not communication in anywhere. Communication in organizations, because we are talking about the management part. So let me share the screen first and see what we have here. Okay. So the communication process, as you see, as you see here, it's an interpersonal process, like it's between humans of sending and receiving. There are two, two persons or two entities or two bodies. One is sending the information and one is receiving the information. Simple with messages attached. So there is in between them, there is a message. Someone wants to say to the other a message. Okay, so we have elements. We have elements for the communication then. What are the elements? The sender, the message, the communication channel, the receiver, the interpreted meaning, the meaning of the communication and the feedback. A feedback means like, I want to make sure that he got the message. Like as example now, I am the sender. Let us do on this situation in between me and you guys. I am the sender. And the message is teaching what I am doing just now. And the communication channel through the PPT or the PowerPoint and using the media and using the uh, websites and using the uh, YouTube the receivers are you guys, my, my colleagues, my students. The interpreted meaning is what I want to say about this class today, about this lecture, the lecture, the contents. And the feedback is at, at the end, I have to make sure that you understand it in a way which I wanted to conduct it to you. The same way, you didn't understand it another way, okay? Like the traffic light. The sender is the traffic light, it sends the red color, the code is red, the code is received by the receiver, then he knows that red means stop, not to walk. Same thing exactly is the communication process. We have, like I told you, two ways communication. The two ways communication means the sender send the message to the receiver, then the receiver the sender will get back feedback from the receiver that he understand it or no. What about the encode and the decode? Well, the encode is when I send the message exactly like the traffic light, like I told you about the traffic light. The traffic lights give us red light. This is the encode but I am the walker in the street. I walk in the street. I stop and see the code. So I know the red light means stop walking. So this is the decode. So we make sure that the encode is responding to, the decode is responding to the encode. The decode is responding, responding into the encode. Yeah. Uh, those are things which uh, uh, um, affect on the uh, the message and the communication. As example, semantic problems. Like if you are talking with someone in the phone or your cell phone and he's talking the cell phone and you are underground in the subway, you cannot hear him because there are some problems you can't hear from him. Absence of feedback. So I'm telling you, hey, did you understand me? Did you understand me? Then he, no feedback improper channel the way i'm using like as example weak signal now if i'm doing this improper channel maybe you won't get it guys because weak internet no reception so this is improper channel physical distraction noises or whatever happening status effects like around me there are some effects happening cultural differences the way you understand what I want to tell you, you might understand it in another meaning. This is the meaning of the cultural differences. The words which I'm using, it might be something else in your language. This is cultural differences. So 
all those are distortion for the communication, effect on the communication channel. What about the communication process? Effective and efficient communications, effective communication here occurs when the intent meaning of the sender is identical. So this is the effective, this is what we want. The sender or the receiver will understand the sender the way the sender wants him to be understood. The same way with the same meanings which the sender wanted to be understood and aware of. So both identical, the sender and the receiver. Efficient communication occurs at minimum resource cost. Usually we put the costs in everything. So why not here? So the minimum costs for the communication in that case. A potential trade off between effective and efficiency must be recognized. So we have, it must be effective and at the same time the communication must be efficient. Efficient uh, means not thrifty, like it's thrifty. It's not uh, exhausting too much money, saving money and at the same time, like saving time and effort, the communication must be like this. So I don't need to call you five, six times to give you the same message. No, only one time is enough. I have not to call you like using very expensive ways. Why? We have the internet, it's very cheap. So I can use the internet in, in contacting you or whatever. Things in the communication is very important. Like as example, the persuasion and credibility, the pre persuasion, it depends. The art of communicating with someone depends on the art of persuading with your ideas. How you let him convince, be convinced with what you want to tell him. Communication is used for sharing information, influencing other people. That's right. Persu persuasion is getting someone else to support the message being presented. And we have horizontal structures and empowerment are important contexts of persuasion. Without the empowerment, then there won't be uh, good communication. Persuasion and credibility in communication. This is the title. Expert power and transfer and, ref and refund power are essential for persuasion. We are talking about the persuasion here as a part of the communication. If I want to just convince you with idea, I'm communicating with you to convince you with an idea. So I have to persuade you. I have to persuade you. Credibility involves trust, like trust. If you trust me, then you will be convinced. Respect, if you respect me, then you will take my meaning seriously. Integrity, all this will make you believe me and be convinced in what, convinced in what I will tell you, then communication will be right 100%. Credibility as well. But still we have distortions in communication. There are some distortions which affect on the effectiveness of the communication channels and the communication process. What are they? Poor choice of channels, about the channels. I'm using a cell phone with a weak signal, no reception. So what I will do? Poor written or oral expression because not only the verbal communication, communication is having many ways like written communication when you write, when you read a book, this is a kind of communication because you are, when you read a message, email is a communication, verbal communication, non-verbal, even with gesture, eye contact, all those are kind of communication because there is a purpose from it. The purpose is that I want to deliver you a message. So the way it is delivered, whatever is called the media, the way by which is delivered is called the media. So the media itself, whenever it's changed, it's, it's, there are a lot of medias to, to make the, to, to send and receive the, the message, okay? So it's not only like it have to be by the cell phone, no. Emails, mails, regular mail, talking to someone, cell phones, 
reading, writing, the TV, the radio, all the multimedias, all those are means of receiving and sending messages. Oral and written communication, verbal and nonverbal communication, all those are ways to communicate. Failure to recognize nonverbal signals, physical distraction, noises, or whatever is happening, status effects, things around me are affecting me and affecting the. So, what is the communication process? This is our question now. What is the communication process? Poor choice of communication, still choose the channel that works best. For a good communication, choose a good channel. Written channels work for messages that are simple and easy to convey. So use the written messages. Require extensive dissemination quickly. Convey formal policy of authoritative directives. Spoken channels work best for messages that. So we have written messages, and those are why they are good for the written messages. And those are why they are good for the spoken messages, are complex or difficult to convey where immediate feedback is needed. So if you need the feedback very quickly, then use the spoken channels like the cell phone. You want to see I understood or no? Hey, did you understand? Yes, I understood. So this is a spoken channel because you will have the feedback very quickly. Attempt to create supportive, even an inspirational climate. How about if you will make an oral presentation? But like you guys, as my students, you like to do, you will have oral presentation, you will do a presentation orally by your mouth. It must be prepared well. Set the right tune, okay? The tune of your speech. Sequence points, stops, and come back, whatever. Support your points, give support and justification for your ideas. Accent the presentation the way you're pronouncing, add the right amount of polish. As example, using PowerPoint, using this, using that. Check your technology. What are you using? Internet or no? Don't be, don't bet on the internet. Be professional. Don't depend 100% on the internet. Failure to recognize nonverbal signals. The nonverbal communication is like the gesture, the body language, all those are eye contact, moving the hands, cells, moving the hands like doing like this, or moving the head like this, or like that. All these are nonverbal communication, which you use a part of your body in the communication itself. So, Mixed messages occur when a person's words and nonverbal signals communicate different things. So the mixed, you're using the words and nonverbal communication at the same time. The growing use communication technologies causes import, important nonverbal communication to be lost. Today, we don't depend too much on body language because of the higher level of technology used. So we don't use too much body language. We talk about the physical distraction, things which will make a distortion and effect on the effectiveness and the efficiency of the good communication by other meaning the things which will make the communication bad is not as it's supposed to be. Include interruption from telephone calls, drop in visitors, a lack of privacy. You are sitting in a place, wherever the people or something, 
can interfere with the effectiveness of a communication attempt can be avoided at or least minimized through proper planning. So if you plan for your communication, sit in a place where no people, no physical distraction, all this, then you will have a better communication. Use a good wave channel. Status effect, what's the meaning of status effect? Which is affecting, we are talking about the factors that are affecting the communication. Okay, so when an organization's hierarchy of authority creates a barrier to effective communication. The people within the organization are the one who will affect negatively the type of communication which you have. Status effect includes filtering the intentional distortion of information to make it appear favorable to the recipient. So as example, I will tell you, just try to make lies because you know that the facts is panic. So I will tell lies to make it easy to ease it for you. Okay, or hide facts. We are losing and I will tell you we are making profits. Subordinates acting as yes men, yes men. So this yes men, yes men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's regardless of they understand or no, regardless of they heard what you said or no. So that's the point. Active listening. So the word listen is different than hear. When you hear a sound, it comes into your ear. But listen means you are doing effort to hear, okay? The process of taking actions to help someone say exactly what he or she really means. This is listening. It's a process of taking action. So you are intending purposely to hear or to see where is it, what, who, what, who's talking and what he's saying, right? But it didn't come to you like something drop on the floor, then make a voice, then this is, we call it here. No, this is listening. You are doing an effort just to listen. Rules of activating listening. Listen for a message content. Listen for feelings. Respond to the feelings. Notes all cues verbals and nonverbals, paraphrase and restate. If you are a good communicator, good communicator, you have to be first a good listener, right? So listen for message content, listen, listen for feelings, response to the feeling, notes all cues, paraphrase and restate. Feedback. The feedback is very important because the feedback will make me know if you understand the message or no. I am the sender. I have to take feedback from the receiver. And he said back because I want to ask him, did you understand what I said? How will the teacher and the students? Teacher is communicating with the students. He sends the message, the contents, whatever he wants to teach. His feedback is like, did you understand, guys? Yes, we understood. Then he will ask them questions. From these questions, he will know that they truly understood or no. This is the feedback. The process of telling others how you feel about something they did or said, or about the situation in general. Constructive feedback guidelines so that for the feedback to be right, for the feedback to be right and to be better, you must take care of the following points. Give it directly, 
make it specific. So you will ask, did you understand the point which is blah, blah, blah? Did you understand me talking about blah, blah, blah? Okay. Give it when the receiver is willing, able to accept it. So as example, if I will do exam, I will ask the students, this is a feedback, the exam is feedback. I will ask the students, when do you want the feed the exam? Okay, so I won't let them as example while they are sleeping or while they are, uh, no. Or it will be in a time accepted, like time of the exam. Make sure it is valid that what you're doing is right. Give it in small doses. So don't ask the student as example. I will tell him, what did you understand from today's class? All the class? Or shall I just segment it into parts and ask him about each part of them? So I will ask him about each part of them. That's easier for the student. So segment or cut into pieces or cut into what you want to take feedback about. Proximix and space design. Proximix is the use of interpersonal space. Interpersonal space is an important nonverbal cue. Workspace layout is often overlooked as a form of nonverbal communication increasingly recognized for its impact on communication behavior. For a good communication also, you have to use the communication channels, which is proper to the type of communication which you, are, you, need, you need to do. So, so communication channels is to carry information in an effective manner. Low channel richness is impersonal, one way and fast. High channel reach is, in per, in per, is personal as well, in two ways and slow. So you have to decide what kind of channel you want for your own communication. Still we are talking about how can we improve our communications? Uh, open through interactive management. The, the management also must be interactive. And it's interacting also with the employees who's working for this management. They will be partly working like a team. So for a good communication, there must be open office hours. They must be wandering around management, which is means the management is not isolated on the whole organization. All are working together. Regular employees, group meeting, computer mediated meetings and video conferences. You will try to use whatever you can from the medias for or the ways of communication to communicate properly. Employees, advisory council, communication consultants, 360 degrees feedback means always make feedback. Make sure, don't go from a point to a point until you make sure that the people understand the X point. If you are using emails in communication, read items once, take action immediately, purge folders, of useless message. So make a folder for the non-use messages. Send group mail, reply to all only when necessary. Remove yourself from this distribution list that don't add value. Just answer for the things which is important by the other meaning. Send short messages in the subject line. Don't write in the subject line a very long heading or title, just small one. Put large files on websites. I have cloud computing, you can put it there. Use instant messaging as an alternative. 
the instant one. Don't forget the basic rule of email privacy. There isn't any. So this is, we're moving from here to the high richness personal two ways communication, the richness communication channels. And this is the lowest communication channels. So when you move to the right, this is the richest. Uh, and to move to the left, this is the lowest communication channels, efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, no, no doubt that the best way of communication is face to face. Because you will know from the eye contact, you will get the feedback from the eye contact within this person or this body or the receiver got the message the way you want send it or no still the face to face is the most way for contact okay so high richness personal two ways okay face to face meeting videos conferences this is the richness the most richness way of communication because you will it's life or at least you will see the, the receiver and hear the receiver and listen to the receiver. Telephone, instant messaging, this is less degree in the uh, richness than face-to-face. -face. The emails and text and messages, it comes in the middle here, middle of the way, like in between the rich and in between the poor or the lower richness. Memos and letters, e posting and e its reports, all this comes into a low richness, low richness, impersonal one way. Okay, so those all are low because it's a one way contact because you don't see the receiver. You don't see the reaction of the receiver at the moment you sent the message but here you see the receiver you are talking to him you are listening to him so you see the, the feedback is there i'm talking about the two-way the two-way communication but here it's a one-way communication like the posting and like the bullet and like the reports it's only you one-way communication means sender Okay, but two ways communication means the sender become receiver and the receiver become sender back. Sender become receiver when he send the, the message. Then this sender, sender give it to the receiver when sending the message, then switching, switching the sender will become the receiver and the receiver will become the sender when he review back with the feedback. Again, those are the richest ways for communication and those are the poorest ways or the lowest richness for the communication. And again, I'm saying nothing is better than face-to-face -face communication. Uh, one of the most important points in the communication is to put a big concern for the culture differences. You have to put big concern for the culture differences, like ethnocentrism, is the tendency tendency to consider one's culture superior to other one. Ethnocentrism can cause people to not listen to others because I think, hey, I'm the better. I'm better than others. That's enough. I am that guy. I don't want to listen. I know better than the others. See? So I won't listen. Address or speak to others in a way that alienate them. Use inappropriate stereotype in dealing with someone from another culture. So we call this kinds ethnocentrism. Avoid the ethnocentrism in any kind of communication.
because it spoils the communications. And it will never give good results in, communic in communicating uh, between the sender and the receiver. Thank you so much. Today we talk about communication, which means the transformation of messages or between the sender and receiver. We talk about there is one way communication, two way communications. We talk about the effective communication. We talk about the barriers of good communication, things which obstacle the good communication like physical distortion, change in the meaning, culture, different cultures, using poor medias of, of communication and channels, all this effect on the communication process. We know how to improve the communication and what the effective ways to communicate. Finally, we came to the most important point that the two ways communication and face-to-face -face communication still and will be forever the best way to communicate. Thank you so much and have a good night, everybody. And if you like the video, please press like it and subscribe. Thank you. Have a good night.